Hey, welcome back. This is Mind Pump, the best podcast in the world, actually in the universe. We did a, a survey here in the studio and asked ourselves, and guess who won? We did. All right, so here's the giveaway today. MAPS Aesthetic. This is a bodybuilder-inspired workout program. You can get free access. It takes about three months, so it's about three months of exercise programming. Here's how you can win access to that for free. Leave a comment below for the, in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on your notifications. Got to do all those things. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you get free access to MAPS Aesthetic. Also, one more thing before we get to this incredibly awesome podcast. Uh, we put together three workout bundles for the month of July and discounted them heavily. So we have a workout bundle for beginners. We have one for intermediate people and one for advanced people. All of them include nine months of exercise programs. So it'll take you from now till nine months from now. Imagine the changes you can make in your body and your performance with expert workout programming in a nine-month period. Not, and also, don't forget, they're discounted heavily. So you got to go check them out. They're amazing. Head over to mapsjanuary.com, find the one that works for you, and then sign up. If you just want to try one MAPS program, okay, if you don't want to do a bundle and you want to just try one, I highly suggest you do the flagship program, MAPS Anabolic. If you're interested in that one, head over to mapsred.com and then get 50% off for using the code January. 50, January 5 0. Again, you get that 50% off. All right, here comes the show. Working out with a workout partner is probably killing your gains. Ooh, hot take. <laughs> oh, yeah. What? Hot take. A little controversial. Yeah, I know a lot of people like to work out with workout partners, and I definitely think that there's sometimes value, right? Like the motivation aspect and someone to kind of check your form and mm. all that stuff. But I think more often than not, what a workout partner tends to do is you work out either more intensely than you should, use weight that you shouldn't be using, do exercises that might not be ideal for yourself, mm -hmm. or on the other side, you waste time, yeah. you're not doing you're much of a workout. you yeah. yeah, you fall into their patterns, not your own patterns. Yeah, somebody is always losing in the relationship. Yes. Somebody's gaining, somebody's losing you're, in the relationship. Because you're following their workout. Right. There's always, there's always whether the partner that is, is showing up that's listening right now, they're like, that is not true. It's benefit. Okay, mm -hmm. well, then you're the one benefiting. You're fucking your friend. Yeah. <laughs> so somebody's getting fucked. Like somebody yeah. is having to you're regress, that you're fired, buddy. change, or do what the other person wants or needs, and it's not what's ideal for that person. Yeah. It's impossible for two people to be following the, the wor a workout routine, and it's perfectly ideal for both of them yeah. at, at that time. Yeah. Later. Now, I do want to be look. I want to be very clear. Okay. Um, if you love working out with a workout partner, you guys match up pretty well. It helps keep you, you consistent. Share the same protein shakes. You've got you've got a good you know kind of uh, vibe going on. Um, there's nothing wrong with that at all. I mean, that the social aspect of exercise can be amazing. It's one of the reasons why fitness modalities like CrossFit exploded and introduce people to exercises that a lot of people weren't doing before. It was that social aspect. It's a very powerful part of fitness for a lot of people. But what you don't want to do, and I think this is the real lesson of what I said, and I know I, the way I opened it was kind of get people's attention, but the real lesson is don't forget that you need to train yourself. Mm -hmm. It's your practice. You know, I remember, um, you know, I've taken a few yoga classes, <laughs> and that's funny to say, Lies. a few. But I remember in, in a, a, there was a really good one, and the instructor said, this is your practice. So if this hurts yeah. or if this is too hard – move into this pose or pause. And I thought that was really good because when you're in class, you can kind of get yeah. carried away. It's your journey. And I, and I think like initially, especially in the beginning, accountability is something that yeah. you, like, you're really seeking that and you want to to, to be able to find that. And, and so having a friend around and like doing it together, it sounds like a great idea. And it is initially, but you got to evolve past that and really like take ownership of your own efforts uh, going forward. Yeah. Well, it, it does contradict a bit of what we say, right? We, we say that a, a an inferior workout program done consistently is better than a superior program done inconsistently. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you are the type of person that won't show up to the gym uh, unless your friend is meeting you there, then continue on, you know, do your thing, meet mm -hmm. with your friend, go, get your workout partner. But the truth is uh, that's you, you want to want to evolve beyond that. You want to evolve to a place where you don't rely on somebody else to, that's the key, by the way, right. You don't want to need a workout partner, right? You want to, it's okay to have one, mm -hmm. but you don't want to be in a position where you need a workout partner because now your potential inconsistencies are, are higher. Right. If they miss or if something happens to them, and what would happen to me quite often, and by the way, this is one of the reasons why we don't work out uh, together. I mean, we work out together, 
but not together. Like we're all working out at the same time. Together, but not together. Yes, yeah. but we're not doing the same exercises and, and, and you know, you know, doing Holding set hands by set. Or anything like that. No, no. And, don't and, do that stuff. No, only one time. Just but mainly, here's Saturdays. why: it inevitably it, I compromise my technique, or inevitably I train a little more intensely, or I do an exercise that maybe not ideal for me because one of you guys is doing it, so I'm jumping in, and so there's a bit of a compromise there. And I can see some value in, in that sometimes, but I think if you get to the point where you need a workout partner and you're compromising your technique and your form and you're going harder than you should and using weight you shouldn't lift and all that kind of stuff, then you're you're hurting your progress. Well, and also I just think a lot of the um, – a lot of times I'll see like the workout partner is sort of the spotter, yeah. right? And so this is like – I used to think that was essential when lifting heavy. Like I had to have a spotter and I had to make sure that, um, you know, somebody was there to, to be able to dig me out of a bad situation when in fact I actually got hurt because of my spotter. Yeah. So, uh, you know, learning the, the proper technique to bail and, and be able to, you know, get rid of weight and, and have these safety attachments now that they have uh, for racks and all these kinds of things. Um, but I mean, it does play a lot more into like uh, you go a little bit more intense than probably you should. You're not really listening to your own body's signals. Uh, you're trying to push through that. Well, yeah. I'm glad you went that way because that's the person I think is uh, that needs to drop the workout partner the most is I think my younger self, who you're alluding to as was your younger self, which mm -hmm. is the, the kid who trains with somebody. And the reason they train with somebody is because they need a spotter for every lift because every lift they're taking to failure. Mm. And we yeah. talk about that all yeah. the time about going to failure. And that is not ideal for you, especially to be going to failure uh, consistently. Uh, maybe it intermittently makes it into a routine here and there on your workouts. And there's some value to that, but training to failure almost every workout, which is what I was doing. So what I was doing always was having a workout partner and at least, you know, one or two sets, I needed my spotter, you know, help me with this lift. It was more weight than I should be doing or could do on my own and having them spot me through the workout. Yeah. And you're just, you're not applying the correct intensity and the, the dependence on having someone to work out there. It's kind of like a two pronged issue. Yeah. You know what I used to hate? I used to hate this. Like when I was I'd work out and I'd have a workout buddy with me and I know that I'm going to stop the set here. No, no, you got two more, man. Yeah, it's yeah. like, Go away. Yeah. I don't want to hear you know what I mean? Don't, you I don't, got it. You got it. Come on, you're almost yeah, there. Like, no, no, I'm doing my <laughs> Did thing. Did you see like, that meme the other day that went around? Yes. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, Maybe ninety percent of uh, No, it said uh you you ain't got it, bro. No, what did it say? It said it ninety percent of the time when your buddy your, your spotter says you got it, you don't got it. You yeah. Don't yeah. Like that. yeah. You didn't get it. Yeah, yeah. no, you didn't I get it, bro. I'm gonna go back to what you said, Justin. It, and I used to teach my clients this as well when I would train them. Because my goal as a trainer was to set them up so that this is something they could continue lifelong yeah. and not require me. Just like we're saying right now, you don't want to be in a position where you require a, a workout Oh, yeah. Partner. This applies to you know a client and a trainer the same way. Yes. And what I would teach my clients is how do you get the dumbbells into position? How do you dump the weight when you can't lift it anymore if that ever happens to you? Because although going to failure is too much intensity most of the time, sometimes it could be used appropriately. So you need to know how to fail if you do fail. If you fail on a squat, what does it look like? How do I get rid of the bar? If you squat, if you fail on a bench, do you know how to use the safeties? Most benches now have safeties. Or uh, there's actually a technique for failing on a bench press. If you have no safeties and you could bring the bar down and you know how to get up with the bar, I don't recommend that for most people, but there is a way to do it. So learning these techniques is important for safety. Uh, relying on a spot, spotter all the time, it could put you in a position where that one workout where you don't have a spotter, then you push yourself past a certain point, don't know how to bail on the weight, or don't know how to dump a squat, and now you're in a in a bad position. I've seen people before do that with a squat where they get to the bottom, and they're they don't they're they don't uncomfortable dumping the weight, and they start to grind, and then their back starts to round, yeah, and then they fail forward. You ever seen that where they fail forward and the weight goes oh, forward? They turn yeah. it. To well, that's what happened when uh, one of my friends was help spotting one of my heavy squats and was trying to help me but actually kind of leaned into me and pushed me forward and oh, no. literally squashed you know, the weight on my back as I fell forward. It was awful. I can't believe I didn't blow my knees out. Oh. You know? yeah. So, yeah, I think it's it's one of those things. I don't, it doesn't get talked about in, at all, really, in terms of like how to bail and how to safely kind of make your way through. You know, I'm going to put it, I'm going to say it a, a little bit differently because I guarantee there's people who are like, oh, my God, my workout partner's the best. I love them. This is great or whatever. Finding a, like the, a good workout partner is almost as hard as finding like a great business partner or a great like a spouse. Wife. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> yeah. uh, like this, this person has to not inflate your ego, but rather keep your ego in check. So if you work out with somebody and you feel your ego inflating, probably not a good idea, right? 
Uh, this person needs to make you feel like you could train more appropriately, need to be able to help you with your form and technique when you need help on it, uh, need be able to kind of match with your similar goals, help with the motivation and consistency, um, not the opposite. You know, I'm, I'm so consistent with my workouts that if a workout partner showed up five minutes late, seven minutes late, like I'm going and you can go work out by yourself now because I'm going to do my thing. So it's really hard. Now, I guess when you do find that perfect partner, it's probably amazing, but boy, that's a, a hard thing. I think the do. reasons that people like workout partners are the reasons why I don't like part workout partners, which is most people would say like, oh, I get the best workouts or they push me when I have a workout partner and I need that extra push or else I'm not going to train as hard. External motivation. And that is yeah. the reason why I don't like workout partners is I know now when I go into a workout, what level of intensity, how much volume yeah. I need to be training with, but I'm also very competitive and it's natural when I'm with my buddies that they're lifting. If he's getting after it, it's really easy for me to fall right into that. Well, I'll do another set or yeah. oh, go ahead, throw another 25 <laughs> on there. I got this. Yeah, I got when this I know. Speed. Or at very least, I'm not going to take the plate off to do my set. Oh, right. Yeah. You know, and I know that. I know that that I know what I need when I go into my workout. And it's not always this crazy, intense, you know, crush myself in my, in my routine. And I know that if now that being said. There are times, too, when I think there's some value in that, right? I know I haven't trained really intensely in a long time. Maybe I'm going to get in a workout with Justin or Sal, and I know that when we work out together, we're going to push each other that way. But that's not something I want to do on a regular yeah. basis. Reminds me of that, that White Snake song. You know which one? Here I go again. Here I go again. Yeah, dude. That's Adam. That's Adam when he's going to the gym. <laughs> you get, you, you see, on, hey, it's on my playlist, dude. It is yeah. I rock. Yeah. With the, with the Literally, t everybody right now is going to be leaving their workout partner a message and yeah. singing that song. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. Oh, I got a dude. Did you guys? Okay, have you guys gotten a bazillion DMs about Fart Girl? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Since we brought that up, okay. yeah, there's so, been uh, new information. So, a little recap, right? She's kind of cute, too, dude. Nice. Of course. She that's was a, selling all them she was attractive. That's why it's, uh, yeah, she's selling. So, she was a reality star. So, a little backtrack. Like, oh, okay. Is that what, backstory. So she was a reality star. She had a bit of a social media following, and she was selling. She was farting in jars, sealing it, selling the farts, and she made something like half a million dollars in a month, was making tons of money. Okay, so obviously she must have got proposed by some fan like yeah, one totally. time and then was like, hmm, you know, like the, the, there's a market here. Like, I, like this market must be bigger than we realize. Dude, you know what? Make fun of her all you want. She's the smartest like booty pick girl I know of because there's a lot of these people that sell images and whatever. So she, or not images. They try to make money afterwards and they can't. Yeah. She's capitalizing. She sells the functional booty. Yes. To, and uh, she capitalized. Yeah. But did you hear what happened? Yeah, she had like a like a mild heart attack or some no, shit, no, right? No, what no. she so, had? <laughs> so what happened? She, she felt like she was having a heart attack or stroke. So oh. she was eating... Now I, I got a chili. I got a theory, by the way, and, okay. and I and I just yeah. read something that confirms Beans my theory. And protein shakes. Yes. So she was eating foods that would produce more gas, so that she could fart more. And eggs. So lots of beans to meet to meet the demand. Dude, lots like, of, <laughs> think about the stinkiest like oh, the like dangerous recipe. supply and demand right here. <laughs> oh, the most like, pungent, <laughs> sul sulfuric, you know, like combination. Uh, she was just like, ah. yeah. Think, Ima well, hey, imagine that though, right? Like you've got such a high demand. Bro, you got it. a golden ticket there. Yeah, and you got all this money you can make, but then you just can't produce anymore. Like, this, well, this booty is a factory. Well, look, look at, let's back up for a second. Look at the business side of this. The margins on those farts were just incredible. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? she's selling them for whatever. <laughs> okay, Wait a second though. How okay? Yeah, how like big 90 is? Profit. I would have thought the same thing. You like, said she's a bit this? of a reality star. And she has a bit of a social media following. She's got to have millions. I don't remember how many. Can you follow. look her Maybe up? Doug? Doug can yeah, can she's got to have millions to be able to sell fifty thousand yeah, dollars. No, like, five hundred thousand. Five. She's got. Did, she's got enough me. of these thirsty weirdos. Yeah. What know? and what was it like uh, per jar? Because let's do. I want to figure this out. Like she has to have a pretty big following to sell that. Yeah. Much. What was she selling? Each Unless she was selling it for expensive. Unless they're like a hundred, two hundred bucks. Well, okay. But no one's paying. I'm going to guess that fart. it was expensive because if you're the kind of person that buys a fart online in a jar, yeah. you're probably willing to spend so a I decent amount I of money. So I disagree. I think it's a, sh a low a price point because I could see myself doing it even as like a prank. Send it to a buddy. Like, you know what I'm you saying? You buy someone else's fart? Why don't you just make For it 20 bucks? Because it's funnier, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's got her picture on it. And I didn't like, have to actually go through the process yeah, of catching my this? fart. In is a, that why you told Justin to fart to draw for you? Yeah. I got to send this to my buddy. Yeah, yeah. I've been selling. storing them in the back. No, so here's what happened to her. So what? What? this is the story. So she was eating all these gas-producing foods, and then she started getting all the stomach pain, and she said it started traveling up. It oh. gave her anxiety. She thought she was having a heart attack. 
went to the hospital and they confirmed that it was just gastro issues. Dude, and uh, I, I talked to Courtney a bit about like this, this happens a lot. No, like <laughs> people think it's they have a heart attack and it's just gas like all the time. Honey, I got this great side business idea for like, us. Hey, babe, <laughs> here's what you need to feed. Here's what, what this would be. Babe, what if we took what we You know how you were saying you were bored at staying at home all the time now? Yeah, I got yeah, some yeah. for you. Listen, we're going to set this little side hustle. Yeah. You're going to make a lot of money. She's got, where are you at with this, Andrew, Doug? Come on, give me some numbers. She's got to be big. Yeah. She can't be. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, she's got to be now. She's probably bigger. Well, I mean, of course, you. but I mean, she's got. Yeah, I've got a number of numbers here. Uh, for her TikTok, she has 108,000 followers. That's not much. TikTok, that's a decent mm. amount. No. Instagram, 282,000 followers. Okay, that's decent. With TikTok. And then YouTube, she has 375,000 subscribers. Okay, oh, that's she's a lot. not even in the millions. Okay. So, so okay. But that's impressive to so put, he, to do a half a million in farts. And what's she selling per jar? A thousand dollars a jar, right? Told you. Whoa. Oh. Told you. Yeah. Told you. You know why? A nobody thousand. buy. Nobody who's interested in buying a person's fart is uh, is looking at the price. They're weird. <laughs> That's a lot of jars. Five hundred people spent a thousand dollars to freaking. Did you really do the math real quick? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's so you're uh, on your phone doing the math. No, I didn't. he's <laughs> contemplating the future of the business. I'm oh just, my god, look at her page. Fart jars by Stephanie Maddow. Wow, look at that. 5,000 fart. Oh, no, don't, damn it. You ruined my, my what I was going to say, Doug. Do you get different whoa, whoa, That's not me. That's Andrew. Oh, Andrew. All right, Blame hold Andrew. On. Whoa, back, back up for a second. Back up for a second. I want you guys to come to the same conclusion I did. She said she went to the hospital, almost yeah. got a heart attack for producing real farts. I can't do this anymore. Now, what is she selling? NFTs. Mm. Fart NFTs. Okay, what do you, what do you mean? What do you, what's, what's your theory on that? What's, it was all a publicity stunt. Bo- yeah, she didn't go to the fucking hospital, or maybe she did and she was bullshitting, but... It was all about like, I'm sorry, I can't make real farts anymore, but I'm going to sell you these NFT farts, which she's apparently selling. How you? Th- so <laughs> look what it says. It I don't says, understand. It says, imagine the smell. Are you, are you <laughs> imagine it. <laughs> it's just hilarious, what? dude. This bubble is going to just bro. They're selling NFT fart jars. Do you see the the? Like, okay, do you guys can we follow just the? Stop for a second and in like NFT fart jars. Yeah, I know, bro. The board ape. Yacht Club. Are you guys following that one? No. So they have 1,000 apes. Maybe Andrew can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe there's 1,000 of these apes. They've sold. They've made a billion dollars. Shut your face right now. A billion dollars selling 1,000 of these. And the, also all these famous people have it. So it's like a... And what it's turned into is almost like just clout. That I can... Yeah, you're flexing. I, yeah, I can... Because the cheapest one was like $260,000. Whoa. You got Steph Curry. You got all these big-name people that have... These bored <sighs> apes. And it's now what's smart about them is it, it gives you access. So you got famous people and wealthy people that are willing to spend this kind of money. Then they, what do you do? So I what right now I think they can meet up. They can you meet want a up. yacht? Well, I imagine that's the future of it. They can't do it. And okay. maybe Andrew, do you know anything about them? Do you follow them at all? I don't. I'm looking at the website right now. There's ten thousand. Ten thousand. Oh, there's ten thousand, there's a thousand. They've a billion dollars though. They've made a billion dollars. That's insane. Selling these bored apes. So okay, so if we go back to Fart Girl, whatever her name was, brilliant because what she's doing is she's literally m- taking advantage of the stupidity of the whole thing. She's yeah. poking her finger at people and saying, "Not only did you buy my real farts, which no, was she's stupid, pulling her finger, but now, now she's thing. right. Yeah. Now you're going to buy my fake farts and it's NFTs." How many more hints do we need that this is a huge, crazy bubble? <laughs> huge bubble, dude. Huge, it bubble. huge fart bubble. Now, okay. Now, certain <laughs> things like this, okay, because they're they're exclusive. I think that we're, we're missing the boat here, dude. Guys, I swear I to God, know, what dude. are we doing? Trying to provide good fitness? Why information? are we trying? Why are we trying to provide valuable, like informative uh, information? Yeah, we need like we got at least between the three of us nonsense, a couple billion dollars yeah. worth of farts. Well, this if you ask me. <laughs> I mean, this whole metaverse thing is... Now, what did you think of the VR, right? So I uh, we haven't talked oh, about that. Oh, your Oculus? Yeah, so for Christmas, I got the Oculus. Yeah. Now, let me tell you, the reason why I asked for it for Christmas was they have a thing with the NBA, and they do it probably, uh, I would say, once every couple weeks. I can watch courtside a game through Oculus, and I'm very... Oh, inter- like you're sitting That's at really the cool. Yes, yeah. and so I'm really interested to see what that experience looks like, enough that I wanted it to buy it. So I... I asked for it for, for Christmas. Katrina bought it for me. That was my original intention. Now, because I have it, I got on there and said, well, let's check some of these games out. Was blown away. Yeah, it's pretty wild. I was blown away by how immersive it was yeah. and how I did not expect the graphics uh, to be at that level. I didn't expect it to feel that real. I would have never considered even getting one until you had me like 
check it out and I was like, wow, this it it's totally the progression of yeah. video games where um just like the excitement like when the Wii came out that was so like different because you're like interacting with it. Yeah. This is on a in a completely different yeah. level the, of interaction. The one game that uh you had me try, the scary one, what's it called? Resident Evil. Oh yeah. Oh, oh I love that game. That's a good time to I mean, that's, out. that's how real this was was I got that. That was one of the first games I bought. It's like this this is true, right? Ten o'clock at night, I think I'm I'm going through. And you it, don't and like scary movies. I put I it I put them it. on and it opens up and I fuck this. <laughs> I'm not playing this right now. Like I literally wouldn't play it. Like that's how fucking real it felt. I was scared, dude. I was scared. Literally. I was all by myself upstairs. It was dark. I'm like, this feels way too Grunting, real. I don't know uh, what to expect. I need to wait till like one you. of my friends is here to. Could you to imagine test the? It out. You imagine the prank you could play on Adam if he's playing that doesn't know you're oh, behind him dude. and then just grab his grab him. <laughs> yeah, just, just tickle his, his side cakes. I mean, bit. I just didn't yeah. know that. I didn't know that they were at that level yet. Like I, Justin, you bring up the Wii. Like that, I kind of expected something we like. But yeah. you have goggles on, yeah. so maybe it's just I just felt like, like, like it was blocky you know, kind of character. Yeah, I thought it was going to feel more like I don't know, kind of three D with. Uh, no, you're in it. Yeah. yeah, and you move your hands. Okay, so and there's you an can old see your hands oh, yeah, exactly. Okay, like just the, look at your hands was a trip. Okay, so there's this well known experiment. I don't remember the name of it. Maybe you guys have seen videos on it where they take the a, divider between the yeah. Hands so they'll or? have a hand. You you put you put one hand out, and there's a uh, a rubber hand that that comes out, and it, you there's a mirror. Mm -hmm reflecting your other hand and they tickle your the, or they touch your real hand and it looks like it's touching your your fake hand the rubber hand yeah. without realizing it, your brain assumes that the rubber hand is yours then they, and what they do is they keep doing this and you're like oh wow this is so weird so you it actually feels, feel it it feels like you're touching my whatever and then they what they do is they they stab it with a knife and scare you and people always jump and freak out like they yeah. felt like they were getting stabbed yeah there's another one where people wear well they also use that for therapy too right like for uh phantom limb syndrome, phantom limb syndrome. well yeah. they have they have those the the haptic uh metaverse gloves now. well well so here hear me out because this is these are old studies that we've done for a long time there's another one where people put on glasses where they're looking through an image and it's a doll, a doll's lower body, and it looks like it's their lower body, and they do the same thing. They tickle the leg, but they tickle the real leg. So they feel like they become the doll. And the people talk about how strange it is and how the brain makes them feel like their legs are small or whatever. So when you are in the Oculus and you put your hands out and you see the fake hands or whatever, without... You, you can't even stop it. Your brain starts to connect and make you feel like those are your real hands. Oh, That's no. what I noticed. I mean, yeah, when you played that Resident Evil, right, you kind of turn yeah. it over and you're kind of going like, Whoa. It's weird. That can't yeah. help but make me think about like voodoo dolls, you know, like it, some weird, like you're sort of manifesting all these ideas of that's going to affect me. Uh, just because you believe it's it, so weird. So I don't, I don't think the 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 courtside stuff is going to take off because, and here's why. Maybe you guys are you've been to more games than I have. I've only been to zero. So here's why I think it would be. Here's why I think it wouldn't take off. I feel like the experience of watching the game live is more about the, the that you're no. there live it, because you can't watch the game as well as when you're watching on TV, mm -hmm. right? I mean. Yeah. Okay. So there's there's two sides of that, right? So I mean, I'm that way with uh, a lot of sports. I actually like watching on TV. The, the, you get the you get a better view. You, right? well, you get the commentating. You get the replay. You get the zooming right. into the camera. Like especially I mean, like UFC fights, dude. I especially to watch UFC them. fights. I hate yeah. UFC fights. Now, TV. Okay. I went to. I saw uh, Chuck Liddell beat up uh, Jeremy Horn, which was one of the. Be I've been to a lot of UFC fights. That was one of my favorite. And I actually had pretty bad seats. I sat up in the second level. Um, but that was so amazing because it was such an the epic crowd, fight yeah. and everybody was on their feet the whole time. I watched yeah. a, a Lakers and Kings game one time and I was in the very last seats in the rafters and that was amazing because the energy in there. But unless you're in like some like epic game like that where you can feel the energy in, in the place, to me it's like it's better to experience it at home unless you're sitting like courtside where you're yeah. like right there on or everything's close. visible. You have to have everything visible though otherwise like and that's why I mentioned that cuz like the cage itself like you get certain angles I had, I missed a lot of things just cuz of where I was sitting. But yeah. here's the thing though. And then what I don't know yet cuz I I signed up for uh and I missed it actually cuz we were busy or something. Um but I signed up for a game and I'll 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 attend one. I don't know how much it costs yet. It didn't tell me. It just said I have to do like this thing where it's like a lottery or something for me to even get accepted to potentially okay. purchase where it's going to be cool is if it a lot gives people access that would never have access to that i mean courtside seats dude i yeah, mean but i feel like it's I, I mean i'm almost i finally got to do that for the like first time in my life way late in my life a lot of people never experience that because it's like four or five grand a but, ticket but that's what i mean i yeah. feel like you're going to do it once and then you'll be like that was cool but i'm not well maybe for anymore. someone like me who could go down there 
and do that. But if you could never experience that, imagine how cool that is for somebody who maybe it only costs 50 bucks. Like, I don't know how much it costs, yeah. but if it's, if it's reasonable and now you have people that maybe. would never be able to afford that experience that get something close to it. Now, of course it's not as good. Do you think that these companies may actually end up like paying some of the players and incentivizing them to interact with it? Like say in between break, like, no, come up, yeah, yeah. the reason why, cause I don't, I mean, they're the opposite, right? Like, uh, yeah, why don't they do that with the people who well, pay five grand? Yeah. Or? Yeah. They already, they already, they'll throw people out interacting with players. Like, I mean, although there's, there's relationships like people like Drake and stuff that will be talking, yeah. hugging players, high fiving. They're cool like that, right? But hmm. for the most part, they don't let the they don't want the 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 people affecting the game. The game people are too serious about sports, and yeah, if you right. have people fucking around and talking and interacting, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna mess now, with too. Now many the things. video game stuff was hmm. interesting. I could see how that would be really fun. I don't know how long it would be fun for if there's more if it's a novelty thing as well. Hardcore gamers so far haven't adopted. These things, like they like with their PCs and whatever, but who knows? I I mean, the next level is obviously going to be hologram shit. So me, right? the the thing that I did not see happen. So Katrina and I, we almost uh, bought a treadmill that was going to be our you know, gift to ourselves, right? For lame gift, I know for a lot of people, uh, but that was going to be our gift for ourselves for Christmas. And I told her to hold out. Wait, let's wait till afterwards, and we'll, we'll and let me see what I can work out. Maybe I can find a deal instead of going and paying full price. Well, now I'm not going to because the boxing. I am like fucking drenched in sweat. Yeah. If I do three fights, which is there are only three rounds each, which is basically nine rounds of boxing, but it is so real that, I mean, I'm sore right now. My shoulders are sore. My core is sore because yeah. you are throwing like real punches while you're doing this. And it's, it's so, uh, just make sure there's no one around you. Well, yeah, you know, you, you gotta, you, you have a, the thing does a boundary or you didn't do it cause I just gave it to I, you. No, I saw the boundary. You set that boundary. Yeah. Oh, so you do. can set it a tight circle. You can do a big open circle. Uh, and when you step runs by and you when know. you step, well, yeah, no, that's, uh, and, and that actually, uh, that's been something that's uh, happened before where Max comes running up and I'm in the middle of it and I've knocked him upside the head. <laughs> oh and, my God. I know. And I, I told Katrina, I'm like, you got to tell me if he's coming around me when I'm doing that. So, but and some, you've seen all kinds of viral, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> some guy faking it. Well, luck, no, luck. Luckily, I wasn't boxing. Like I'm really careful because I'm throwing real punches when I'm boxing. Where I, I, I kind of hit him like when I was playing like a game where I was just moving my hands and I didn't know he was near me. But when I box, like yeah, no, I go upstairs by myself in in this room and I get. But what I love is that it's so engaging and fun. And I'm like, it's I'm drenched in sweat, so I get like this great little cardio workout. And I told Katrina, I would way rather do that than go sit on a treadmill or stand on a walk on a treadmill or ride a bike. So well, yeah. And I remember a long time ago they had a Kickstarter for that Omni treadmill thing where it was oh, like yeah. just this dish that um, that way you, you can run and stuff yeah, it had it. little grooves in it, and so you could actually run and like turn to the side and run, and it felt like you're just I running. Mean, player one hit it out the park. Yeah. After now, my experience, I thought that was so much further in the future for us than than like soon. But now after experiencing it myself and knowing that those those things exist and they're going to be probably hitting the market for the average person soon, mm -hmm. uh, that that shit is the player one is like right here. Yeah, it is. And again, yeah, it's getting weird. It's not going to be for everybody. Uh, and I know that I, I'll be somebody who probably dips in it, has fun with it. Like, I didn't play it the last two nights or whatever, so I'm not like – I haven't done anything longer than maybe an hour on it at one time. I know Andrew told me we were talking about it because you own it, right? He said he had to stop because he was – he caught himself playing for a few hours, and he said he felt the back of his brain felt like he was throbbing, you said, right? Yeah, so he said it's like the back of his Weird. brain was like throbbing, and so he's like he hung it I up. I don't want to get that checked out, but I don't know if that's the operation. <laughs> That sounds like something else. You know what, though? Might be gas. What felt really weird is I only tested it for five minutes. When I took it off, the real world felt weird. My brain had already adapted to the to that virtual world. Yeah. To the point when I took it off, I had to, to adjust to the real world for a second. Now, That's do you really predict weird. then that we're going to see some unintended consequences totally. from it? Oh, you think so? Oh, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. 100%. Just like you will with anything that's mass adopted that we didn't evolve using. I don't know what those unintended consequences... I mean, I could, I could guess, but... I think it's going to be, be very, some equilibrium things yeah. in the future. I mean, you and I like, both felt like we were fine afterwards, yeah. but then again, but the we, time length I think right. might make a difference. I mean, you got to remember this is getting in the hands of kids mm -hmm. who will muck out on this thing for nine hours straight, and so we'll yeah. test the boundaries. I don't know what that looks yeah. like. Hey, yeah. speaking of tech, did you guys see that Sony is going is releasing an electric car? What? what? Sony electric car and a SUV Outfitted concept. Outfitted with a PlayStation. Yeah. So now, so the electric car market, you're getting all these tech companies are entering the market, right? Apple is talking about it. Sony. Mm -hmm. Who else was saying that they were going to do it? Obviously, you have Tesla. Well, you Tesla. have all the major. Car and all the major car manufacturers. Yeah. Yeah. 
What? This is interesting. Like the car market hasn't been, you know how long the car market has been like the same damn companies for so long? Did you know that I for 90 Google years too, straight no? that GM has been the number one car sold in the U.S.? Yeah. 90 years straight. It yep. was just disrupted this year. Wow. Who beat it? Toyota. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Toyota. First time in 90 years that it, it, it outsold outsold. But uh, wasn't GM. Ford the only one that <clears throat> didn't have to take any money, you know, from when oh. the bailouts happened? That's a good That's a good point. Yeah. That's yeah. A GM point. definitely took all the yeah, know, but And they had a big comeback this last year, yeah, too. But it's, it, it's really getting weird. And then BMW unveiled a car that changes color with the touch of a button. What? What? Yes. Uh, maybe Doug like can a find chameleon it. Chameleon car. No, you so didn't it's see like this. A, like it's an L, uh, oh, it's an LED screen or something. No, it's the it paint. No, it's yes. Oh. You can change the paint, show, guy. Doug, Come on. Show. I've seen chameleon it's paint, be like, but it's because of the way the sun reflects. Well, yeah, that's no. different. It moves. No, what he's talking about has to, and it has to be LED, Sal. It can't be real paint. Same people fuck all of a sudden spray paints it, itself. No, it's not the same <laughs> kind of paint, but it's but it's paint. I would. It's got to be some sort of a LED screen. Maybe Doug. Maybe Doug can find this because it looked. Very, very, it was very interesting the way that it changed. Well, I mean, doesn't that make sense? That would be like a big monitor. Right. It's mm. just a, the, the outside a bunch of is. little, like, you have video, I don't know. Here, like I got cells. a link for it right here, Doug, if you haven't found it yet. And I'll send it over to you. And you can sh and, and check this out. That's going to blow my mind because, yeah. <clears throat> but it literally. That's it went, cool, though. It went from white to black. And it changed. It just changed. And it's not like a bunch of screens surrounding the car. It's like Wally. -E. It looks like a normal like, car. Like blue is the new red. It was. It's very interesting. So and now think about that, right? You have a car that has five colors that you could change. Well, what to. car is it that has like the big solar panel on the top of the of the car? Is who solar what, panel? Yeah, it's like it looks like like a like I know there's a car that's been made that has like a solar panel on top, and it looks like just normal glass. Or I, I'm assuming. All right, like, Doug. Can you those, can you like, push play? It's apparently Bugatti. very temperature oh, sensitive. Watch this. Watch. Oh, it's temperature sensitive. Watch, and it it. Uh, oh, it's like the mood ring stuff. You know, like when yeah, but look how weird. look how much it changes. Did so you they, see that? So do they heat? That's what it is. It's got to heat up. They heat. It look at black areas. to white. Did you see that? And that's like where, where's the black? I don't see black. in the beginning. It should now. Now you see the paints going all the way through the car. What Isn't that wild? Just hell? to show how 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 easily it changes and can fluctuate. Yeah, it's got to be like the mood rings, right? Where they where they change the color. When I think it's skin different technology up. than the mood ring from the 1960s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure it stemmed from that. Yeah, it's, 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 that's, that's where it all started. <laughs> it got better mood, sure. What's next? The pet rock car? Yeah. 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 Let's go off of 60s tech or whatever. Yeah, dude, it's really interesting what we're yeah. going to see this uh, this next decade, I think. Interesting. interesting. Much, a lot man. of stuff getting So I wanted to do something real quick on the show. I wanted to clarify a few things that we've said in past episodes because there's been a little bit of uh, you know confusion, I, I'd say. One of them has to do with a recent episode where we said – you know, try, don't try to burn more calories manually as a strategy to lose weight. Okay, a lot of people took us took that as a saying cardio is bad and you know it's not, you know, not a good strategy. Here's the, the reality: studies will show this that without dietary changes, just trying to burn calories just doesn't work very effectively at all. And then number two, the adaptation stuff that we were talking about: cardiovascular activity over time by itself as the sole primary form of exercise, along with a caloric restriction. Results in a slower metabolism. This is proven time and time again. In studies, this is why we said resistance training is a better option because it speeds the metabolism up. That is not saying that cardio is not healthy. There are health benefits regardless of those adaptations. And it doesn't mean you shouldn't do that kind yeah, of we stuff. We never not say that. I know. Yeah. I just want to clarify. An, this, is, this is so annoying to me because I feel like we have to cover this It's every... the knee-jerk people. You know? I was just talking about how I'm doing cardio. I'm doing, I'm doing boxing for cardio right now. It's not like I'm an anti... No one's anti-cardio. It's just that... So many people use it incorrectly. They apply it with the idea that it is a good way to get fat loss. It yeah. is not. No. It's not a good strategy. Mm -mm. It's a terrible strategy. And the people that want to come on here and argue all the fucking time are all the people that are addicted to cardio. Get yeah. the fuck out of here with yeah. that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, that's why I'm talk very passionate about this. Well, no, it's just we, we talk about this so much, and I'm passionate about it because I, I believe we all would agree that this was like one of the biggest mistakes that clients would make. Totally. You know, is they would go to lose weight. They would go from the holidays. Okay, this is a perfect time to have this conversation. They would go from these holidays. Eat over-consuming, eating shitty food, being lazy, watching TV, sitting <clears> by the fire. Now it's New Year's resolution. I need to lose 30 pounds. What's the first thing they do? Reduce their calories and get on a treadmill. <clears throat> That's it. It's fucking terrible. It's half a bad, half. It's a bad strategy. And the studies show that a good chunk, and some studies show half the weight loss is muscle. That's, yeah. as, that's yeah. because your body is adapting to this new 
stimulus and making you more efficient at that particular Much activity. better strategy. And at the end of this strategy, cardio can definitely come in and play a nice role. Plus, it's, and it's also healthy. So that we're not saying don't do it because it's unhealthy. It's it Movement may, in general is healthy. Yes. You know, like activity, like making sure that you're, you're, you have enough activity throughout yes. the day is the, the main Listen, thing. Listen, if, you if, if you're happy with your body composition, okay, if you're happy where it's at currently, hell yes, do cardio. Mm. Enjoy it. Do it. It's good for you. But if you're somebody who's trying to change body composition and your method of doing so is cardio, it's stupid. It's terrible. Yeah. And I'm going to continue to say that on this podcast because we've trained enough people that that is one of the first mistakes that everybody makes when they get back towards getting into fitness. There you go. And the second thing I wanted to clarify was on the episode about the eight worst people to take advice from. And the first category was doctors. It was a couple people that DM me, oh, doctors are, you know, this... To clarify, doctors are amazing at their field, at their specific field. So you talk to a hormone doctor, they're incredible. You talk to a doctor that deals with the brain, they're incredible in that particular category. Now, there are medical professionals that are professionals in diet and nutrition. They know a lot about diet and nutrition. But generally speaking, doctors who are experts in other fields know very little about nutrition, but the danger is that we assume that they are they know a lot because they of the appeal to authority. Because they're authorities, we assume that they must know what they're talking about. And also, dietary changes to be successful require consistent coaching along the way. So it's not just here, do this, it works. It's do you get that coaching? And doctors just don't do that. That's not what they're supposed to do. So yeah. Yeah. there's a second thing. Well, I mean, and again, we did clarify that in that episode. Yeah. It's just people like conveniently see the title or see us list things out, and then they don't hear it all the way through. Well, listen, I mean, uh, the audience that's been listening for a long time knows that about us. We've already yeah. covered this a this thousand different movies. ways. Yeah. And really what ends up happening is we title things that are controversial so we can get more looks, more views, and then we can explain what we're talking about to, to benefit us on YouTube. That's yeah. a fact, right? So we say things that we that could like that is going to spark people to listen. That's true, but we say it in a way that you're going to get right, attention. Right, right. But what ends up happening when you do that, you get so many new, you know, thousands of new people that are listening to us for the first time. And they don't even listen to the And all they now. hear is that one yeah. sound bite, and then they assume a lot, and they get on their totally. like, keyboard, keyboard, keyboard warriors and start firing totally. away a bunch of stupid yeah. stuff. Now, one more thing. Uh, we had talked about Caldera. It's one of our sponsors a, a while ago and talked about the serum and the moisturizer. And we said, put the moisturizer on before the serum. It's the other way around. Serum before moisturizer. I had like 10, what are they called? Estheticians yeah. DM me. And like, no, no, no. Oil and then moisturize, not the other way around. Now, what is what is actually Caldera say on the website, Doug? They say something. They they say like a morning and a night routine, and they have it. Yes, right. So in the morning, you use the clean slate, which is the cleanser. Yeah, which and you is, follow that up with the base layer, which is the cream. Mm -hmm. In the evening, you use the clean slate, the cleaner, the yeah. the cleanser, and then you follow it up with the serum. So not at the same time. Not at the same time. time. However, if you go to Cosmopolitan. Oh, they got the best advice, yeah. let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> they they say the dupe, start right? with your cleanser, and they have a big list. They have eight things you can do in, in the, do the people order really do all eight of that these? you do them. So Dude. it's cleanser, toner, serums, yeah. eye creams, spot treatments, moisturizer, oh face oil, sunscreen. So if we break it down for Manasque Caldera, exfoliator. it'll be cleanser, serum, moisturizer wow look at that that all that stuff they recommend to put on your why, face why is beauty stuff so complicated because it, 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 <laughs> it's, a, it's a very powerful it's market a, it's a lot of work to stay beautiful hey hold on a second hold on you know what i'm gonna compare to Apparently, this like this no, is no, like no. the supplement market yes for, yes uh, for fitness. Dudes yeah, that want to build attach muscle. it to all these things and uh, then yeah, yeah, yeah. I can it's the same that. thing here's your morning supplements here's your pre-workout intro workout post-workout and then take this before you go to bed you got all these different yeah. So that's why I could never talk crap to somebody who uses all the well, stuff. Because if they know me, they'll be like, the I mud have? mask, I serum, I exfoliate. The, pers the person I who did correct me, it did make sense because they were saying that the the oil like opens up the pores and you no. don't want to walk around and leave it like that. So you Not open. Do this. Oh, you mean the cleanser opens up the pores? No, no, no. Because the, 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 they say serum first and then the and then the uh, moisturizer, right? I think it's to I, fill in to make sure the yes. pores have oil to fill in and then the moisturizer on top. Seals it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think so that's, that's what it is. It's keeping it open is what I'm saying. Yes. It doesn't seal it, so the moisturizer is supposed to seal it. Is that what's going on? I think so. Yeah. You know, I, feel I can't like wait until my football I feel like you have the prettiest face, episode. so you should be well, able to be the best. Thank you for that. Yeah. Although yours is now, look at that, dude. But you've been using it the longest. 
I have. It's shiny. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's glowing. Yeah, it looks very good. Yeah. Are you pregnant? <laughs> um, hey, uh, do you guys see the, the stats on Joe that Rogan? Happen. Do you see all the hubbub that's going on right About now? About his downloads? He gets 11 million. I got to bring this up. 11 million per episode. Uh, per episode. Makes me feel like a punk. I just shared our, our 4 million downloads in a month. <laughs> in a month. Yeah. yeah. He, gets, he gets 11 per episode. Per yes. episode. Can 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 Wild. someone pull that up? There was an actual like now, graph. Yeah. I want to. Yeah. Because I saw the graph versus like mainstream media and like all the like ABC, CBS, MSNBC, Fox, all that stuff. Like. And it it just dwarfed all. He's of like us. all of them combined, right? I think. Uh, uh, he's so much bigger than all of them. Maybe Doug can find. Which is chart. funny because our, they're they're coming after him right now, which I think is really ballsy. Yeah, they're but, going. But after, doesn't have any weight. They're going after him because uh, he he does a lot of the counter narrative stuff spe lately, especially around uh, COVID. Which, by the way, pay attention. The media and the politicians are now doing a one eighty. They're reversing some of the th stuff they said. Did you know the CDC now says? Go back to work, mm -hmm. even if you test positive, so long as you don't have symptoms. Yeah, and they also say there, there's five days that, that during the pandemic. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe uh, we can double check just to make sure this is correct. They also said that five uh, five day quarantine, no longer ten day. Um, people, uh, representatives have said cloth masks are a total waste. Uh, sorry, we're not going to control. Oh, even CNN, policy. I saw put something out there about cloth masks, yeah, not being effective. They did. Oh, but it's Doug. That says five to seven mil. No, that's million. Wrong. There was a, there was an actual picture chart that showed, uh, you know, what the downloads were. But anyway, um, he dwarfs mainstream media with yeah. the, with the amount of views. Completely dwarfs mainstream media, um, and they're going after him. They don't like him because he. Doesn't really bow to no you know? okay bad strategy smart strategy, what do you think to go after him oh, for yeah the mainstream media to, well, I mean I I think to to maintain relevancy they're, they're going to have to come out yeah it's you know the, the more I think about it as we're sitting here talking I'm thinking you know what it's just like the media going after Trump Trump has such a large pool of people paying attention to him that going after him makes headlines. So yeah. going after Joe Rogan because of his pool and how big he is is probably yeah, I they're, first they're was totally thinking that was vilify him. I guarantee it, dude. Because okay. he's getting too much attention. Look at this. So this is according to Nielsen and Spotify. So this is viewers per show. Eleven million for Rogan. The wow. next closest is Tucker Carlson at three million. Okay, that's how much bigger he is than the next guy. Which is another real controversial mm -hmm. show. Look at CNN Pride. Go to the bottom. CNN Prime Time under one million. Wow, I feel like we could hang with some of these like big name ones right here, dude. Right? He's so he's so big they can't touch him. Going after him, I think, is a losing strategy. Just shows you how much media is changing, right? Yeah, totally. There's a major shift there. Major, major shift. It's really crazy, uh, and it's a predictor of kind of future things to come. That this is these are the people that are going to be controlling. I, I don't want to say controlling. But the gatekeepers to the well, narrative. They have the I'd love voice to now. see the moderate sort of views be propelled past all these yeah. extremist ideas. Yeah, and speaking of the narrative, uh, another study came out showing that weight loss is uh, really helps with the potential severe symptoms of COVID. There was a study that showed that severely obese people who had gastric bypass, not even the healthiest way to lose weight, so gastric bypass, sixty percent reduction in severe COVID symptoms or potential. Uh, well, COVID I'll be symptoms. damned. Yeah, so they're going to be put. They're going to be pushing the weight loss. I think now as a big thing, or or fitness and health. Finally, welcome to our world. I know. Did you guys know that Joe, Joe's actually uh, sponsored or partnered up with Butcher Box too? You know that oh. we have share a couple of sponsorships, and he's been with them for a long time. Dude, I did the slow cooker pork butt uh, in uh, the other day. Unbelievable! I know uh, you guys do it all the time. Right? No, Doug does that. All Doug? Time. Yeah, Doug does that one all the time. I've done it, but Courtney's the one that does that. Yep. Okay, yeah. so yeah, we did it. it. So Je we we do. I don't know all of the the steps, but I know that Jessica cut it in a few pieces. It's big, right? You get this big old pork butt, which is not the butt, by the way. No, it's, it's, like it's the shoulder. It's the shoulder yeah. Yeah. yeah do they call they, it a pork butt? That's such bad PR. Yeah. Let's name the shoulder <laughs> the butt. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, they call What's it that. I have no idea why. Nobody have the history on that. No, I'll look it up. Google it, Doug. Yeah. So anyway, we cut it up into a, just yeah, a few we, like, big chunks. Shred it and put it in tacos. Well, what we did is we seared it in the cast iron, so it was seared on all sides, and then we threw it in there with a little bit of I think bone broth and olive oil. We mm -hmm. salted it, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Oh man, it fell off! Literally, we picked it up and the, there was a bone in there. It fell right off. Oh yeah, and it was so good. We made tacos. tacos. That sounds like a great idea. Real good. Super super delicious. That I haven't done. I'm gonna yes. do that. That actually sounds like yeah. Courtney really, makes those for us all the time. It's, it's really, really really good. really really good stuff. Um, Adam, you mentioned a uh, documentary a while ago that I finally watched. Which one? The Alpinist. Oh yeah. Have you, finally. Have, have you guys seen this? 
No, I caught like a little bit, and it just was like I made my the hair stand straight up when watching this guy climb oh, these faces. I was like, "Holy shit, dude!" No, what, I didn't get. I didn't get that. Why far. do people like this exist? Well, I mean, it, it's that whole frontal yeah, lobe I, thing, right? Oh. I think they need adre- they, they don't produce adrenaline enough to. or something so, like that. So, do you remember what was the guy's name? The the guy who did free solo. Um, Alex, Alex, Homoz, uh, Alex, uh, Honold, Honold, something, something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was crazy to watch him climb yeah. El Capitan or whatever the face, nothing, Dude, right? Something like nobody can do. That's and how his I, reaction was like, okay, I did. That's that. how I found out about this was Alex was the one who talked about yes. him being this up and coming kid. His kid's only like twenty five. Mark uh, something. Yeah, Mark he's something. Only, he was only like twenty five years old. This right? guy, okay, free soloed a freaking mountain, the snowy, icy mountain. Yeah, and he not only is climbing the mountain, he's climbing the ice. So no in, ropes, no nothing. nothing. So he's going up, I'm a maniac. He's climbing it, and then changing. Oh, his there's sh- a big ice waterfall. That's how I got to get up. Then he pulls out gear, changes his shoes while he's on the freaking mountain, and then <laughs> climbs the freaking ice and switches off. Yeah, like what he did makes like, like rock the, climbing. Yeah, that's for you know basic people. Oh, like, I'm gonna do it on ice. I couldn't believe it. There was he, there was one that he had to climb. I can't remember what it was. It was it was like one of the biggest peaks. I don't remember where snow ice whatever yeah. he was waiting for a break in the weather he goes up almost makes it to the top gets hit by a blizzard yeah has to scale Can down that? on the side of a mountain barely hanging on oh. no ropes or anything like that and you get hit in a See, blizzard me anxiety dude. and you're on like one of the like craziest mountains that no one else <laughs> no one can climb on like a regular day oh my god oh, dude. dude that's that's gnarly no i've been watching my uh favorite dude soap opera what? Uh, yeah, <laughs> What's that? yeah, uh, Cobra Kai. Oh, <laughs> yeah. it's, it literally is a soap opera. You I, guys. Just talking about how uh, it's so cheesy, how bad it. it is. Yeah, but then how much I keep coming back. If to I it. wasn't, if it wasn't so yeah, nostalgic for Karate Kid, I wouldn't watch it. But because I'm, you know, I grew up with Karate Kid, dude. So I love the throwbacks. Oh my gosh! So there's this one episode where, like, so basically, Danny and, and Johnny, they both have to like train each other's methods. Oh, it yeah, is so, so funny. Is dude. it really? Yes, and it's it's. I mean, I, I, everything is so cheesy. And, and 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 the acting is you know it is what it is it's not very great but you just get into it because you love these characters and then they still have all the cheesy fighting you know moves that like you know after watching the UFC and yeah. then watching uh karate kid moves you're just like face palm you know? <laughs> yeah like it's awful I mean what Doug said I think is so true I think Johnny makes that show right it's because all the politically he steals it. all the politically incorrect stuff that he says like I feel they did a really good job of doing yeah. that especially in this climate right now where everybody's I'm so team everyone's going woke in the other direction and trying to be so PC it's like let's throw this character in there that is the complete opposite of that and I think they do a good job of making light of it and having fun with it and so yeah. that's enjoyable to me like I I think the the way it's written yeah, his he character like sets written. Danny up to get his ass kicked by all these guys playing hockey. Yeah. I was like, oh, I love this. Oh dude. yeah, no, it's funny. I hated him in the original Karate Kid. He was a dick, you know. Growing up oh, and watching it. See, I, I was a big Johnny fan. Oh my god, and of course you were. Yeah. Dude. Oh, silly. you know which one I watched that you guys watched that I actually enjoyed was the uh, the the new Marvel one, the Shanghai. Shang oh, Shang Chi. Did you yeah. see that? Good, huh? Yeah, it was good. Uh, told right. you. Yeah, very. Um, you haven't is, seen it either? No, I was the one that brought it up. Yeah, it was really you, good. Yeah. yeah, I just finally watched it. Um, what's funny the, too? Yeah, it was it was good all around, but. Um, what is that uh, like? Uh, like all the the different worlds and characters and animals. Like what is like like Narnia? It's like fantasy. Yeah, like yeah. fantasy. It was very fantasy. It was, it was fantasy. not what I expected yeah. from like a, a traditional kind of Marvel movie. Uh, but it was good. It was, and he's, yeah. he's a cool superhero. Yeah, it, was a fun, it was a fun one. Yeah, if you read about him in the comic books, he's a pretty cool superhero. Yeah, I didn't even know about all these different it's, characters. It's such There's, a big, expansive universe. You know, that's why, you know, part of the theory on why Disney, I mean, it's so brilliant on Disney to buy the rights to uh, Marvel and Star Wars and then to build all these. It's almost endless content. You know, oh, it is. You know? And and Between then so Wars? smart because there's cult-like following for both Marvel yeah. and Star Wars. Yep. You're talking about millions of people. And like that in itself will solidify them as like one of the number one streaming services. Just and then they remember when they announced last year, like they're gonna do like there's a ton that are coming. I would love out to see uh, DC's like box office numbers versus Marvel. Like D- not even close, right? DC nowhere. Like yeah. yeah. However, would, on an individual basis, um, you always DC, say Batman is like DC's their, got the well. Like, Batman's yeah. awesome. That was I think that was their only like. Gold mine. What yeah. else did they do good? I don't think they did anything good. Besides- well, the last thing that they did that was just cinematically just excellent was the Joker. 
That was. Oh, and I I'll tell you what. DC, huh? You know what? And, and here's the thing. Those were good. Those were all good. And here's the thing. That, that's Batman still. I feel like that's all. It is. Yeah, you know it what I'm is. Saying? But that's DC, right? But w- what they still haven't fully captured, and I hope they do. If you read the comic books, the DC comic books, the Joker is beyond maniacal and evil. He's like a well, really he's like Satan. I mean, that's what the model. Terrible, after. terrible person. Like if they really capture that in a movie, it's going to be a horror movie. Like you're, it's going to be like Science of the Lambs. That's the Joker mm-hmm. in the comic books. And yeah. they, they, they kind well, of don't you feel like they kind of set the table for that in that last yes. one where yep. he just is tortured just, inside and kind of starts to make sense yes. why he's this kind of person. Yes, yes. But that's it's it though. Psycho. I mean, I mean, and I I would consider that Batman still, even though it's Joker. It's within the Batman story. Is there any other DC ones like the Watchmen sucked and like I didn't like Watchmen any. was good. Oh, I thought it sucked. What? Yes. I thought it was yes. pretty good. Did you like it? I wanted to like it. No. Yeah, I wanted to like it too. I thought it sucked, Sal. No, I thought it was yeah. great. It's I mean, actually, you like a lot of bad stuff. Cult- Though, no, so, I mean, you're, no, it's, it's got a cult it's, following. Doug will step in. Hey, on this listen, one for sure. those of you on YouTube, if you like <laughs> Watchmen, let Adam know. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's it, it, it got um good reviews and it's got like a cult like following. So. Well, yeah, I mean, I think both DC and Marvel have that cult like following, so you're always going to get some people that now, are fanatical. How does Spider Man work? Yeah. Sony owns them, but Mo- but Disney owns Marvel. Like, how does that all work out? Because yeah. doesn't Sony own? Sp- is it just the Spider Man alone a movies marriage, that yeah. they do? Like, how does that work? I didn't even know Sony was involved in Spider-Man. Yes. Oh, really? Uh Uh-huh. Is that true, Doug? It says, yeah, 1999, Sony uh, acquired the film rights to the character. Yeah, but how does that work? Is that the only thing Sony has the rights to as far as characters? Is that like a, like, I didn't even know that was Was that for their interest in making video games initially? Oh, probably. That's a good, that's a good theory. Yeah, see, Andrew over there is waving his finger. He knows. (laughs) Is that why? Is that what it was? Yeah. Oh, I see. So Disney has not. But then they, they do, do the not. Marvel movies with Spider-Man. So they must pay Sony to use the character. Because remember the yeah, Avengers. Yeah, so Sony hold, holds the rights to Spider-Man instead of Disney. Uh, so that's why they don't appear on Disney+. Plus. Hmm. Oh. oh, that's interesting. I didn't. Is that the only one that that's Sony weird. owns? Has they, have they acquired any other characters? Like- they do Venom as well. Venom. Venom oh, sucked. Venom. I watched it. Yes. It wasn't good. Yeah, it, wasn't mm. it made me sad because in the comic books, Venom is also terribly evil. Well, He's like is, a real... Yeah, and this is one of those, I think, it just doesn't translate well in film. Like, Well, you um, have to be careful. You're giving it to kids. So there's probably a fine dance, right? Of like, okay, how evil are we going to make it? We're going to make it so evil it's like a rated R movie and yeah. the kids can't and watch the it. The graphics <laughs> are so cheesy though. Like you just don't, you don't buy into it no. like, at all. No. All right. So real quick, I got to say this. I read, uh, I, w- I went and looked up like crazy news. You guys want to hear something ridiculous? This hmm. is a true story. There was a Chinese couple who could not conceive for years, went to a fertility doctor and the fertility doctor was able to figure out why they weren't conceiving. And this is a true story. You ready for this? Huh. Okay. They were only doing anal sex. Jeez, shut up. Dude. I swear to God, this is the truth. And they didn't know? They didn't know. They were from China. They didn't know. Are I you guess, sure it wasn't North Korea? No, okay. I swear. And they and they <laughs> were, were they not doing poop? it properly. The yeah, doctor explained what to do. They went home and a month later- Come on, send me that article. There's got to be more to this story, right? That's the story. That's the story was I read. How old were they? Okay, listen. Was it? <laughs> was this the guy's idea? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's totally what it is. Yeah. No, honey, I'm sure yeah. it's this one. Oh, it's just so weird. It's not working. <laughs> I'm oh, sure. I'm, I'm going to try this later on when I get home. <laughs> honey, like, we've been doing this wrong the whole time. It's like, I don't want to have kids. Man, that's the ultimate hustle. Let's just make this happen like He's like, come on, doc. Like, you know, you got my back here, right? Did you find an article about it, Doug? Yes, it? I did. See, told but this you. is uh, back in 2018. Yeah, oh, Sal with the old news. Again. Yeah. It's all right. <laughs> but, hey, it's, just stuff. it's new I to mean, me. Yeah, four no, years, is. dude. She's like, four, you can't have butt babies. Four years. Four of- years. He was he was having butt sex with her, and and Come she on, was man. not figuring this out, dude. <laughs> the woman admitted that sex was unusually painful. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. you're like that's not always starts. Wow. Uh, I mean, how. How naive do you have to be, like sexually? Well, I mean, pretty for- damn naive. They were young. They okay? How young were they? They're in their twenties, dude. Twenty six and twenty four. Well, okay. I mean, let's don't not- shelter your kids. This please. isn't this isn't so outside the scope because you know there's still that whole thing of like I'm still a virgin, 
Uh, well, yeah, but you and, know you don't get pregnant. Yeah, but I mean, but you're doing that intentionally, right? Like, yeah. and so I remember girls when we were in school that were what? you know were virgins, oh. but then they had anal sex, right? Yeah, so we, quote unquote virgins. We still. knew who the, they were. Yeah, but, <laughs> so, they were popular. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 were, they were very popular. I'm just saying. Somebody's got to be real here. Yeah, yeah. No, they were. There, there's a there was who was it that brought up uh, the, that way that um, I guess there's these Mor Mormon kids are having sex. So apparently it's against the rules for them. Yeah. Yeah. To so, do so, they go in and then they hold it. Yeah, they don't pump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's all. That, yeah, I swear to God, I don't if, know what they call it, but that's if what there's a name. There's actually a term for yeah. it. Yeah, they do all. There is something else. They do some other stuff too. They do a bunch. Of, they've cut, found some creative ways. That's around. what I'm saying. Everybody's if you trying make, to find ways around that. If you pull, make like, rules around sex, kids yeah. are going to find a way to do it. That's yeah. the bottom line. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I was that kid, right? So I was a, I was a virgin in school, but I was doing Same. all the other stuff, and yeah. so and it's just when you're a kid and you you're brought up in a religion like that where it's, it's called soaking justin yeah I knew there was <laughs> soaking yes i knew there was a name for it soaking yeah <laughs> okay hey babe you want to soak let's, let's let's get those super soakers out <laughs> hey one of our favorite partners is organifi they make plant-based supplements that are organic for athletic performance and health one of my favorite products is pure it improves cognitive function is good for the brain it contains compounds like lion mane I also like their green juice. So if you miss your vegetable servings through the day, you can drink the green juice and it's a decent substitute. They also have plant-based protein powders and much more. Great company. Go ch check them out and get a discount. Head over to mindpumppartners.com, find Organifi, and then use the code mindpump for 20% off. Well, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Garrett from North Carolina. What's up, Garrett? How can we help you? Hey, so I have a question about hydration. Um, you guys have talked about it a lot and just the benefits behind it. Um, but I'm talking specifically during a workout. Um, I see guys in the gym who have those, you know, full gallon jugs or have those, you know, Amazon bought ones, the giant lids, and they're chugging them um, between sets. And I personally only go to the fountain maybe two, three times during a workout. And it's not even me you know, feeling like I need water. It's just, oh, I have a, a second or two. I should go take a quick drink and come back. Um, and so I didn't know if there was something during a workout I was missing um, with these guys that are chugging this water or if, you know, what the meaning behind that was. Yeah, no, good question. So here's an easy test uh, to see if you have enough hydration. If your urine is salty, no, I'm just kidding. That's not the test. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> no, it's the color. No, no, here's, no, here's the deal. Um, hydration makes a huge difference. You know, some of the first studies done on uh, adequate hydration and athletic performance were actually, well, not first studies, but one of the most popular studies uh, was done out of University of Florida, where they were giving their athletes, um, you know, sodium infused and electrolyte infused water with a little bit of sugar. And they saw this dramatic improvement in performance. This later on turned into Gatorade. This is where the name Gator comes from, Gatorade from University of Florida. It actually makes a huge difference. But here's the thing. Uh, you got to make sure that your electrolyte balance is good as well. Because if you just drink a bunch of water and you don't have enough uh, sodium, sodium is one of the most important electrolytes for sweating athletes. It's not going to do a whole lot. You may actually start to reduce your performance. So try something like this, Garrett. If you're working out and you're sweating a lot and you're drinking, make sure you drink water. Make sure there's some, maybe a little bit of sea salt in your water or even better, uh, LMNT is a company we work with that has an electrolyte powder that has adequate amounts of sodium. And had you asked me this question a year ago, I would have answered it maybe a little bit differently. The big difference now is I've actually tried um, LMNT, which actually has it's a thousand milligrams of sodium in a packet, and I, I notice a big difference. And I always thought as my as someone of myself to be well hydrated. So it give it a shot. I would pour one of those packets in you know a nice big bottle of water, maybe two times the size of a normal bottle of water and drink half at the beginning of the workout and then drink the rest during the workout and see if you get a better pump and better performance. Um, so far, the messages I've been getting from people is they do see a big difference. And again, the studies do support that. Well, I think the the benefits, aside from like the health benefits, right? The keeping the joints lubricated. I told you before when I was feeling that thing in my quad that was always popping yeah. and then I started drinking, that made a huge difference. Energy level. Uh, so obviously there's, there's health benefits to you drinking uh, adequate water, but my favorite part about that was what you're talking about with the pump. Like I remember when I started carrying that jug around and I, I made it like a goal, like I would get a half gallon down before I even went into my workout. And then I'd end up doing another quarter to a half gallon during my workout. 
And I had better pumps from the the water than I did from any other supplement, NO2 explode or yeah. any sub creatine, any other supplement that I've taken. I got a better pump from just making sure I was uh, hydrated like that. So I love that uh, in itself. And that played into better workouts. Well, yeah, I also, from a performance perspective, um, I noticed, well, like what Sal was saying in terms of be having electrolytes and, uh, you know, that being a real advantage in terms of like performance, but also like, uh, I remember that one study where they're talking about like cooling your core temperature. Yeah. And so, you know, that has to play a bit of a factor in there as well in terms of like having, you know, a cool water to, to, to bring your core temperature down to recover a bit, uh, you know, more effectively. So that was something that I did notice, you know, if I was constantly hydrating, uh, you know, whenever I'd had time off the field and it was nice and cold, it did kind of bring me back. Now, along those lines though, Justin, isn't it, isn't it recommended that you do lukewarm or room temperature water, not ice cold water? Right better to be absorbed, but there's this perceived, um, I guess, improvement in performance and, and, and maybe some of it's anecdotal when people will drink cold, right? That, Especially if you're hot. That's what I'm careful about. I'm pretty yeah. sure it's anecdotal at this yeah. point, but for me, I, when I had it just a bit colder than say, uh, you know, my internal uh, temperature, mm -hmm. I was able to bring that down a bit and felt more recovered. Yeah, Garrett, I would say um, experiment and see how you feel. Um, and you'll probably notice an improvement in just how you feel and, and performance wise. I would always recommend my clients you know, drink water before and after. The longer your workouts are, the hotter you get during your workouts and the more that you sweat, all three of those things um, mean you pro you're going to need more hydration than somebody that's not experiencing those things. So if you have a short workout, you're not sweating a ton, it's not really hot, uh, it's not going to make as big of a difference. But if it's a long workout, man, I tell you, it, it, you'll, you'll notice a profound improvement in your performance by making sure that you're adequ adequately hydrated. Gotcha. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, Garrett. Thanks for calling in. Absolutely. Yeah, this is this is one that I ignored for a long time. Yeah. Like I water, I, I, I let me take a supplement. You know what I mean? Let me eat more carbs. <laughs> well, and it it made such a huge difference uh, that you know it's one of those things you look back and you like you want to slap yourself like why didn't I do this simple thing? Well, the other right. thing that's I like too is just you most people I would train didn't get enough water in their day. So when I'd have somebody just like we talk about protein, like when people yeah. start tracking and paying attention, they realize like, oh shit, I guess I don't drink that much water. Mm -hmm. I don't eat that much protein. And what I've found is when you're working out and you're sweating and getting hot and you're kind of you have little rest breaks in between every set, that's actually one of the best times to be able to hit your your water intake goal yeah. for the day. Mm -hmm. And so I found that having a client carry a you know a half gallon or one of those liter bottles or something into their workout and setting a goal to chipping away at a, a bulk of that during the workout, uh, they were they were more likely to hit their their water goals in the day. And so I think there's huge value just in that yeah. alone. This is one of those pieces of advice or one of those topics where we were advised as kids. So opposite. It's oh, ridiculous. We weren't allowed like water breaks uh, just because of the, the mental toughness and discipline aspect. It was, it was crazy because, you know, like uh, just going back and kind of revisiting that, uh, I just noticed like how much better my joints felt uh, to your point about lubricating and, yeah. and just like retaining the amount of water. If you retain like proper amount of water in your cells, you perform better. It's a fact. It's a fact. And I, re I mean, it's even worse for me. I remember specifically being told by PE teachers Oh, you have a side stitch or a cramp? Don't drink water; it makes it worse. <laughs> like the opposite yeah, of opposite. what you're, oh, wow. what you should do. Like, yeah. oh, you're getting a side stitch because you drink too much water before running the mile or whatever. <laughs> As a kid, I'm like, oh, okay, I should not drink any water while I run. Uh, so, dude. so ridiculous. Our next caller is Felix from Louisiana. Felix, what's going on, man? How can we help you? Hey, uh, first off, I want to just say thank y'all. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity to ask all this question. But um, one of the questions I wanted to ask you is, I'm kind of running through the maps. Maps uh, aesthetics right now, and uh, the program does take a good bit of time, uh, about 90 minutes if I do all of the movements and exercises and sets and so forth. And uh, I'm I currently I'm a dad of four, and uh, so time is a you know not a lot of it. So I'm trying to condense the workouts down, and I was wondering if using supersets is something that is recommended or or, or you can do in. Uh, a MAPS program, I, I've, I've seen some of the programs and only a few use supersets or they use um, uh, agonist supersets, not antagonists mm -hmm. and so forth. And so I was just kind of interested to see what y'all's thoughts were to cut down on time, length of the program, 
um, or just move, removing movements altogether. So yeah. just curious about supersetting exercises <laughs> in the program. So I, I know you don't ideally want to edit programs. So yeah, no. Um, right. Well, <clears throat> actually, ideally, you do want to modify programs to fit your individual body and needs. Uh, however, it's a good idea to go through the programs first, the way that they're laid out, and then start to because here's the deal. We create programs for the masses, um, so it's never going to be as good as an individualized workout. Okay. That being said, you got to figure it out and learn how your body responds, and don't just change the programming on the fly because anytime you change the programming, you run the risk of making the program less effective. Again, that being said, you might be in a situation where you got to do that anyway, and so it's okay sacrificing some of the programming because – it just doesn't work with your with your schedule. Hey, kids are more important. Yeah, so you know that's okay. I, I would say this: you're probably better off just shortening the rest times overall, um, rather than doing supersets. Supersetting is more of a program change than you know cutting some of the rest periods short. You could also try something like this. You know, Maps Aesthetic is a three full body day workout, and then you have focus sessions. You could try saving mm -hmm. some of the exercises for the focus session. That's days. what I, hundred percent, what I would do. I mean, the focus sessions okay. are only like 20, 30 minutes long. So, mm -hmm. uh, what I've done with clients that don't don't want to miss anything that's in the program is, hey, take two or three of those exercises on the foundational days, move them over to your focus days, mm. and then you'll still end up hitting everything you want. Also, uh, the reason why too, I, I think Sal's not recommending to superset right now because that might be an option in another program. This program actually has that, so you, I think it's phase three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it yeah. is. Phase three, yeah. you're going to get into a lot of supersets, and the idea is that you, it's it's novel when you get into that, so you don't want to be doing it for the entire program. Not that we couldn't. And then the then the other thing is uh, also, I don't know if you have any other programs, but. There's other programs that are probably a little more conducive for, you know, a dad who's got a lot on his a plate. Less small, you yeah, yeah, and I mean you can yeah. you, you can build an incredible physique running Maps Anabolic and that's only a 3 day a week type of a program. I just I think we all tend to go towards the one that, you know, is the, the bodybuilder inspired or changing aesthetics and, yeah. and you know think that you need to train 6 days a week in the gym and it's just not true. I mean, I run yeah. more of an anabolic style routine most of the time, so there's nothing wrong with you, you know, switching out using the program or mm -hmm. modifying it like we, like Sal said, um, or putting it on the focus days. I like that a lot. Yeah, I would just steer okay. clear of like, yeah, changing the the kind of adaptation we're seeking. So that's like, the, if we're doing superset, we have that intentionally in phase three. Uh, so you focus on that. But like in terms of, uh, you know, if it's a time issue, you know, kind of scaling back and maybe um, uh, taking a, a bit of the volume uh, out, but but sticking with the same type of, uh, you know, rest. In, in rep range. Yeah, and now you yeah. did you did mention supersets with agonist antagonist. So yeah, so my background. So I was a personal trainer for mm, six eight years, and then I made a career change. Um, and so I, I've always understood. I think I've seen y'all talk about compound sets versus supersets. Um, that my mind always was supersets could be antagonist or um, agonist muscles. And so I was thinking with this more so not so much the same muscle groups, but doing you know like a chest back. Yeah. For the sake of sa uh, saving time. Yeah. So that's, that's good... more of what I was thinking and. You know, the reason why I chose Maps Black uh, is because I've always been a performance-driven person, sports, mm -hmm. athletics, and so I wanted to try something. I've never I've never done any type of bodybuilding program oh, ever. Oh, good and so then. I wanted to try something different, Yeah, good and on you. Uh, that's why I chose this one. So, Yeah, well, Felix, yeah. okay, with considering your background, which means you know, you know some stuff, and what you said about antagonist supersets or, you know, otherwise known as maybe compound sets, yeah. That's less of a program change than a superset for the same body part. Not so, a bad strategy at all. Yeah, so I do that sometimes. Now, the only challenge is your stamina, you know, might be mm -hmm. a bit of an issue, but going from bench press to barbell row uh, is very different than bench press to fly, right? For for the yeah, so yeah. you can definitely do that. You can definitely try that out. It doesn't change the programming or the adaptation nearly as much as a superset for the same body part. And again, I do that sometimes where I'll go Back chest, back chest, you know, bicep, tricep, bicep, tricep, you know, type mm -hmm. of deal. Okay. And as far as other programs go, just curious, uh, for a dad of four, uh, what would be some of the other ones maybe you would recommend Anabolic. to run after this? Yeah, Anabolic. Maps Anabolic or Maps Strong. I bet you would love Maps Strong. That is a great, that is such an underrated, great program for building muscle. With your athletic background, too, I think you'll love it. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay. okay. I appreciate that. Do you have really access? Do. By the way, do you have access to MapStrong? Because I'll, I'll just give it I to do. you. I do. I just purchased it during New Year's. So. Oh, well, you're all set. And, uh, but what about Maps yeah. Anabolic? Let me give you something. What do you got? <laughs> we got I, I we do got. not have Maps. I do not have Maps Anabolic. Oh, right. for sure. Because <laughs> Anabolic is another great one. I mean, yeah. that's a three day routine. And, it, it, you know, being a busy dad myself, I tend to fall back on that one a lot. I yeah. think all of us do, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah. I think that's yeah. a, run that a common bit. program for all of us. Yeah, I'll send that over to you, right? Well, I appreciate that, guys. Thanks, Felix. All right, thank y'all. You got it. I like this question um, <clears throat> because this is kind of this. It was neat because obviously he he knew what he's doing, right? He's yeah. not like completely uh, newbie at all. Um, and I think we have the people have this idea that you have to follow the programs to a T. And uh, you, we actually and we don't say it as much. We used to say it a lot when we first started mm -hmm. um, that we recommend that you modify. You run through it one time as close to it as possible. And then you start to to modify it for you, your body, your time, all these things. And really all the suggestions that we said and he said, none of them are wrong. Right. You know, it's really just, it's playing around with that and seeing what works best for you. And, you know, yes, the programs are, are best, I think, ran uh, if you run it to a T. But let's be honest, none of us do that. I mean, yeah. nobody in here pulls out their phone and runs Maps Anabolic or Aesthetic exactly how it's laid out. Most of us follow the programming and then modify it a little bit how it is. Yeah, I think there's this um, there's this conflict that people have, which is I want to do the most po effective possible programming for my goal, but they don't put in their goal their lifestyle, which, well, my goal is also I got to be out of here in 60 minutes. Uh, maybe I'm more tired or I have pain in this particular joint or, you know, here's a muscle group I want to develop a little bit more. Like that's all part of your goal. So modifying your workouts means optimizing your workout for all of that, not just like what's the best for bodybuilding or what's the best for, you know, body sculpting or performance. You got to look at all of it and that's okay. There's trade-offs, but there's nothing wrong with that because like, like with Felix, you know, he's got, he doesn't have a lot of time. He's got kids. So that's part of it. So is he going to, build less muscle as a result, maybe, who cares? Like, this is obviously important to them, so yeah. change the workout. Yeah, it's it, it kind of highlights one of those uh, parts of, the, of our business that we, we started to work on, and uh, people don't really understand that we have, like, modifications available, too. Like, if you have different types of pursuits and you want to be able to incorporate those within our main staple programs, we do have MAPS mods, and, you know, that's something that we are planning on expanding upon as well. But, uh, yeah, it's... we. Our intention was always to be able to integrate, uh, you know, your specific needs and make it more individualized, uh, you know, the best we could. Our next caller is Angela from New York. Angela, what's going on? Hi, how are you guys? Good, we're Good. great. All right. Good. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, so my question for you guys is see if you could possibly explain um, the ideal number of exercises per workout. I just finished the aesthetic, which I loved, um, but I was a little surprised at how many workout, how many exercises were in each full body, um, which I get it. Obviously, you're doing, you know, every body part you're hitting, um, but, you know, you see so many things online, focus on the basic exercises, get stronger at them. So I was just looking for a little bit of more input on that. Yeah. Was this your first program you ran of ours? Yes. Now, what, now mm -hmm. what did you do before this? Like, how long were you consistent with your workouts before following MAPS Aesthetic? What did those look like? Like, how many days a week were you working out before? So, I've worked out five or six days a week for probably 10 years, maybe. Um, I've worked with a trainer. I've done, you know, fitness competition. I'm actually certified as a trainer, so I typically just do um, all my own programming. But I do... I've done splits. I typically do a few full body days a week. Um, but usually I would say like the cast stuff, the, the shrugs, things like that. Um, the smaller body parts I wasn't always including in my workouts. Okay. Now, now how were your results with aesthetic? Did, were you pleased with how your body responded and how you felt? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And, and I wanted to ask those questions because sometimes people who follow like maps aesthetic, for example, they go for the program with more volume um, and it's not really the right program for them. But being that you worked out, you've been working out for so long, consistently you competed, it sounds like. Um, you said you're certified, so you know what you're doing and it worked for you. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's, your answer is kind of right there, you know, because the answer to this question is really hard. It really depends on who I'm talking to and it depends on their performance 
and the results that they get. Now, MAPS Aesthetic includes three full body workouts that have a lot of volume, but that's only three workouts in the week. The other two workouts are these focus sessions that last like 20 minutes. So really, if you look at the total amount of volume, it's not crazy in comparison to other types of splits. Now, as far as total exercises in a workout, again, that really does depend. You know, I, I know people say, oh, don't work out more than 45 minutes or an hour or whatever. Uh, that's that's totally not true. It, it really does depend on the person. And you really have to base it off of how you feel and how it's working for you. And if it worked well for you and you got good results, um, I think you're on the right track. Well, that's part of why the first question I asked was if he'd ran any other MAPS programs. And a, probably a better question is what Sal said, which is asking you what your experience was. And normally I would tell a client, don't start on MAPS Aesthetic. It's one of our highest volume programs. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so we wrote them in the with the idea of people following anabolic performance and then aesthetic. So, you know, taking them almost nine months to actually get to that type of volume so they work up to it. But uh, like Sal said, you've been training for, you're you're an exception to the rule where if you were a client of mine, I'd say, yeah, we could go into aesthetic first. Now, I don't think it would have hurt you though to go uh, anabolic performance and then aesthetic either. I think that uh, still has tremendous value even for an experienced person like you. But you're a case where it would still be okay. Whereas if you were a brand new person, you just started lifting and you jumped right into aesthetic, I'd be telling you, oh, well, that's that's a terrible program. That's too much for someone like you because you haven't been training, but that's not you. So it's okay. The other thing is uh, aesthetic can be long workouts. They can take some people almost 90 minutes to get through it. Nothing is wrong. We just actually had a question similar to this, uh, but the issue with them was time. They just, it's a long time to be in the gym. And so there's, there's nothing wrong with you taking a few of those. For example, you've talked about the shrugs and calves, maybe some of the smaller muscle groups, nothing wrong with you moving those over to focus days, which are only 20 minutes long and extending the, the focus days to more like 45 minutes to an hour. And so you will have an, an even, you know, hour workout or so for every day of the week versus these higher, longer, you know, higher volume, longer workouts, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then the uh, off the other days, focus days are only 20, 30. Nothing says that you can't take some of the exercises from the foundational days and move them to uh, focus days. Yeah. Angela, you know, here's something to maybe pay attention to, and you're a perfect person to, to talk to about this because you've been training for so long. So you're, per, you're, you're, you're likely very in touch with how your body feels and performs. I know I'm doing too much in a workout. If I start to notice that my pump is my ability to get a pump starts to fade. And also if it starts to feel like, an endurance workout versus a strength workout. Like if I if I'm, you know, th- two thirds of the way through the workout and I'm I'm like, oh my god, I have, you know, four more exercises and I gotta like mentally get through it and it's gonna be grueling and it's more like I'm, you know, just kind of toughing it out. Then I know this may be a, a little bit too much. And the other one is how you feel after the workout. If I feel like I need to lay down afterwards or take a long break because I'm wasted. I probably did too much. If I feel good after my workout, like I should, I, I what I aim for is when I'm done, I feel more energized than I did going into the workout. Mm-hmm. Then I know it was enough. So I, I give that advice to someone like you because you're 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 better you're you're better suited to judge those things. It's really hard when somebody's a beginner. Like you say that to someone who starts and they're like, well, I kind of feel like I'm grueling. I'm you know toughing through the workout from the beginning. Or what do you mean energized? You know, I'm tired all the way through. And then uh, who knows? But for someone like you, I'd say. Look for those things. And if you do notice that, oh man, I, I don't feel so great, you know, about two thirds of the way through the workout or afterwards, I feel like I need to lay down. Just try this, cut one set off of each exercise. Start like that. So you're not cutting exercises, you're just cutting volume overall and then see how you feel. You might be surprised. You might find that cutting the volume might actually get you better results. Well, not to mention one of the first things that you'll see if you are, if you are doing too much volume is a plateau. And again, another reason why Sal probably asked you that, how were your results? And if you would have responded, oh, they were okay, or I didn't really see any strength gains, if that was your response, then we probably would suggest you probably need to cut back a little bit. But if you felt great and you saw great results from it, whether that be body composition or and or changing uh, strength or strength going up, uh, you're probably right where you should be. Yeah, and you made a good point on – um, the focus days, because I, well, like you said, they would take me anywhere from 75 to 90 minutes on the full body, but the focus, I'm still doing at least an hour when I'm there. So I'm probably maybe doing a little bit too much volume there, but when I ended, so the last set obviously was the super sets the last three weeks. And 
I didn't go too much lighter, but I definitely didn't go heavier for those, obviously, because I'm supersetting them. So then I kind of felt like, okay, well, my squat's not going up. My deadlift's not going up. Um, So, you know, should I back off and try and increase, you know, basically just the the volume as far as those basic exercises? That's that's new information right there, right? Yeah. So okay, now now the now the answer changes a little bit. So focus days are only supposed to be 20, 20, 30 minutes tops. So if you're spending an hour in the gym and you're doing all those foundational days of, you know, 90 minute workouts, you probably are doing a little too much. Yeah. And my recommendation would be follow the focus days as they're written. And if you're gonna add anything to the focus days, take them from the foundational days. It sounds like to me you're follow you're doing everything the program's saying, plus you're adding more on those focus days. Yeah. The goal, the idea is this you want to do the optimal amount of volume, not the amount of volume that you can tolerate maximally. It sounds like you're going to the limit and going as far as your body will allow you to go. You're only gonna get results slower mm-hmm. as a result of that. You're not gonna hit your full potential. And of course, you're always you're you're probably teetering, if not bouncing back and forth between overtraining and not overtraining. Um, considering your background, that's probably your tendency. And also, I mean, I, I don't know. You did you know focus sessions for an hour? Sounds like you're adding a bunch of stuff. Try following the program as it's laid out. Trust the programming and um, and see what happens. I I would bet you that you're probably going to see better results. Got it. Thank you. That sounds good. And then last question is, what would you recommend I do next? Mm, strong. Yeah, map, map, map strong will be good. Do you yeah. have access to that, by the way? No. All right. We're going to send that to you. So, and, and one, one little add to that. Okay. If based off of how you feel when you finish aesthetic would be the difference if I directed you towards strong or anabolic. So I may push you back towards anabolic or even performance, to be honest, because those programs have a little less volume. So if at the end of this workout, maybe you give me feedback as a client, you say, oh, Adam, my you know joints are hurting a little bit or my deadlift and squat have been stuck on a plateau for a while. I might not go to strong. I actually might pull you back a little bit on the volume and go towards anabolic or performance. But if you feel great and you loved aesthetic, you saw great results, feeling good from it, no issues, then I would go to strong next. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I definitely feel good. I, this morning I test, I just went and did like five exercises and I went up like 10 pounds on, uh, on everything. Yeah. That's great. First, first like five to seven reps, not much, but I just wanted to see if I could do a little bit more. So, I mean, I feel good. My body feels good. I definitely do feel better and more energized when I complete the workout. Um, and I know you guys have millions of callers who call and say, well, I'm not going to back off. And that's kind of where I fall. Um, so, but I appreciate that. Thank you very much. No problem, Angela. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the other thing too, is, uh, when you're, when you're like this advanced, um, and this, you know, you enjoy working out so much, you can sometimes, uh, fool yourself a little bit. So you could be like, Oh, I went up in 10 pounds on my squat, but there went up in 10 pounds from, the last couple workouts, which overtrain them, mm-hmm. overall they're not up. Yeah, they just took a little break, saw themselves go up. Oh, I'm on the right track now. You know, these are things to really pay attention to because if you're a fitness fanatic, and I'm speaking uh, from experience, you, I do this too. I tend to push my body to what it can handle. Almost not always, optimal. Yeah. almost always. I mean, I would say ninety percent of the time, if you're experienced, you're advanced, or you've been consistently lifting for years you probably have a tendency to overdo it. Yeah. If you're brand new, never really trained, you're probably afraid to do too much, so you don't do very much. And so it's almost always the the opposite is true. But what I love about these live calls is here we are talking to her. We all give some tips and answers, and it was literally after we all went round robin answering. Then we find more out more information yeah, just comes then, out then magically. All, yeah, yeah. Then all of a sudden you say, and you're doing hour long focus sessions. Listen, we wrote those focus sessions to be single joint movements. You know, cables, bands. They're type somewhat of recuperative. Yes, they're not designed to hammer the body. And if she's telling me she's doing an hour, she's getting after it. Yeah. And that, and if there's any, if she's plateauing at all, or there's any issues at all, there it is. Is, is she's doing 90 minute workouts on foundational days and then she's coming back to the gym and doing another hour and I bet the exercise selection isn't the best well, either. Well it's tough because you get somebody like this and I've had a lot of clients like this that get really into it and this becomes a bit of an obsession and it, it's fun and they're getting results but 
honestly, at, at the end of the day, what's your goal? Like, where do you go from here? Right. And I always have to like reiterate that because we're at such a high volume right now. Uh, you know, it, to me, it's, it's always about like, you know, kind of bringing them back. So that way, uh, we can work our way back up yeah. and keep, you know, this, this sort of, uh, fluctuating approach. You know what this reminds me of? It's, it's like, this is so common, right? You get a client and you're like, do you have any areas of pain on your body? Oh no, I feel good. But you know, you yeah. have to go through from yeah. the head down to the feet, step by step to get the real answer. Are, your neck doesn't hurt. What about your shoulder? What, oh yeah, my elbow bothered. Me. Oh yeah, yeah. My yeah but nothing. You gotta ask a but lot of happened, questions, you know? right? Because yeah. I literally asked her what her workouts were like. Yeah. And she told us what I failed to do was to go through each piece and ask her more specifically because yeah. then you start to get the yeah. real answers. Right, mm -hmm. right. Thankfully, she gave us a little bit more information at the end, which allowed us to change well, our answer. And to be honest, now that we have all that information, uh, if she was my client and she she put all her trust in me to allow her to to to, to guide her, I would probably actually make her go to anabolic. Totally. That's what I mean. Yeah. For Not only for, it's probably- the discipline of it. Yes. Probably better for her body, but also so I can show her like, Watch this. We're only going to train three days a yep. week. On your off days, you're going to do these little rubber band, easy exercises. Follow it to a T. I'm, and I'm not even worried right now what you're seeing, strength. It's just this is what I think your body needs. Then let me take you to strong or let me take you to another program yep. and then watch your body respond, uh, knowing now what I know from what it is. Because she's definitely somebody who probably leans on doing too much volume. Our next caller is Ali from Illinois. Allie, what's going on? How can we help you? Hi, guys. Um, had a quick question. I first want to say thank you for taking my call, my question. But um, a while back, I was listening to an episode, and it sparked a thought that although I know about macros and have a pretty good idea of how to track, I don't have a good idea of what it's like to build metabolism. I think I specifically heard you, Sal, talking about how you helped your wife build metabolism and stay lean with increasing her calories. And that's definitely something that's been difficult for me. So I wondered what is the method for that? Yeah, no, good question. Um, but do you mind if I, if I get into yeah, a little bit more background stuff detail? Cause I'm looking at your question here. Um, the one that you wrote in, do you mind if I go through some of this Allie? Yeah, no problem. Yeah. It says, so you grew up as a gymnast, um, and you've been working out for a long time and you've seen your, your, your body weight go up and down quite a bit. So you've seen some, some big fluctuations in body weight. Is that correct? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Usually on a diet phase down to 140 and then just more recently having okay. difficulty getting okay. back down. Okay, Ali, I'm going I'm to uh, get maybe a little bit more personal, okay, if that's, if the, if that's okay. Sure. I know the yeah. sport of uh, gymnastics, um, especially for women, is one of the most challenging in terms of body image issues. Um, it's, there's, there's, it's just really hard because – Yes, you are judged by your performance, but body size is often talked about quite a bit. I, I've known, I've coached some athletes who've actually had their coaches weigh them um, before practice and all that stuff. And so we've had to deal with some of the damage of that after. Do you feel like you've had some body image issues as a result of that? Or is this something that is not an issue? Um, I'd say a mix. I feel like I also coached, so I kind of have that like mental space to help other athletes get through it. But definitely as a child, it was there to like the pressure to look a certain way and perform a certain way. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And the, and the reason why I'm asking is when you see big weight fluctuations, that usually points to a relationship with food that's this kind of come or go, restrict or, you know, everything goes type of um, attitude because, you know, we're talking about a pretty big swing in body weight. So when it comes to tracking, I'm always hesitant to recommend that someone in, in a, maybe a situation like yours goes and really starts to measure and track things. Because what that tends to contribute to is, is what you've maybe been experiencing, where you track and so everything's like on point and then you get sick of tracking for whatever reason, maybe because it's maybe motivated by self-hate or maybe you're just done with it and then you go way off in the other direction. So I would recommend for someone like you to, to not pay attention to those things and rather look at behaviors instead um, and performance. So I would, what, what, in your workouts, what brings you joy in your workouts? What part of your workouts do you really enjoy the most? Is it the strength or the stamina or the body control? Do you have anything specific like that? I think definitely more of the body control. Like I enjoy like also just like the mel melodic of it, like increasing weight, seeing that progress. Okay. And then like the 
work out. Just, I guess, yeah, seeing gains in strength. Perfect. So overall. there's another thing that you're you're not asking or, or that I think is important, right? So um, if she doesn't have body image issues and that's not a problem, the other thing that I see with gymnasts is their, their dedication to training and consistency and intensity is can be uh, way overdone. Right. You have that, and that's just athletes in general. It's a, but, it's a switch. And so yeah. if you have been applying that mentality for most of your weight training life, uh, I would be, that's what I would be looking at right away. So let's just say there's, uh, I mean, for sure, Sal is right to look into uh, the body image issues. If there's anything there that you feel you're self-conscious and maybe that's driving some of your behaviors, but let's say it's not. Um, then the other thing I would say is your athletic background may be driving the way you're programming, which means are you the person who's training, you know, six, seven days a week and you're doing cardio sessions for an hour for three to five times a week and also cutting calories down below 2000? If that's you, then that's your way overdoing it. And somebody okay. like and, and if we're going to rebuild your metabolism, it's going to look something completely different. I, I'm going to cut your cardio sessions. I'm going to make you only train three days a week doing something like MAPS Anabolic. Um, if you need to move and we need to find a way to counter some of the calorie increase that I'm going to do to you, I'm going to ask you to walk. We're not going to do any intense cardio and we're going to focus on building strength. And um, I'm o I'm okay with you tracking if you don't have the issues that Sal is saying. If Sal is hitting something that you feel is on point, then I think he's right. And then going towards a more intuitive uh, way of paying attention, like ver versus weighing and tracking, and um, you know, getting out of out of control with being super hyper focused on that. But if you feel confident that there isn't. Uh, insecurity stuff going on or body image issues going on. And it's purely, I'm just trying to figure out I'm, I'm not, what am I not programming right to, in order to build my metabolism, then I would be looking at the amount of volume intensity that you're doing in your training and how little you're eating in comparison to your, your body size. And uh, I would want you to be up towards 25 to 2,700 calories, not right away, but that would be the goal is to get your, your body size and type up to that with you not training six days a week with a ton of cardio on top of it. Yeah, and, and you know, here's some nutrition advice that doesn't involve specific tracking. You can try something like this, Allie. Um, you could try uh, just a few things. One, avoid any heavily processed food. So eat only whole natural foods, um, and then eat in this order, protein, fat, um, and uh, vegetables, and then carbohydrates. So I would go like your meat, then your vegetables, and then if you have room and you're still not satisfied, then eat your carbohydrates. That that alone typically gets somebody's eating a little bit more appropriate. And then focus on your performance in the gym. Focus on what's making you feel good and what's making you stronger. And that should bring you to a faster metabolism in a, a healthy way. Healthy in the sense that it doesn't make you it doesn't cause more dysfunction uh, down the road or or this boomerang effect at the end where uh, you know you're everything's on track and then you kind of go off track uh, with everything. Are you following any of our programs at all? I do have access to MAPS Anabolic, and I my program before was loosely kind of based on that, so I've adapted some of the trigger sessions into what I was already doing. Okay. So you're working out, what, five days a week then? Um, yeah, five to six. And how, how, how long are your workouts typically? Um, maybe hour and a half, including a warm-up. Okay. And so, okay. I appreciate your honesty. I would, so go maps anabolic as it's laid out. Yeah. Follow it to a T. Just follow okay. it to a T and then do the things I said with nutrition and then start from this too. Before you eat, uh, this sounds silly, but I swear to God, it makes a huge difference, right? Literally you have your meal, make sure you sit down to eat it. You're not distracted. And then ask yourself, is this going to nourish me in a healthy way? That's it. And then eat your food. It sounds silly, but what it does is it brings awareness around what's going on. And do this before you eat anything. Uh, I think what we tend to do, especially when we when, when we see body weight fluctuations, is we don't do that around the foods that we don't want to be around uh, aware around. So oh, I'm not going to do it right now because I'm going to eat this you know sleeve of Oreo cookies or I'm going to overeat this whatever. So just try yeah. doing those things and then kind of allow this process to work. Um, so – you know, uh, based off everything we said, again, if you feel like that that was your tendency in the past, mm -hmm. I would go in that direction, and I th it'll it'll definitely move you in the right way. And those are some of the details I left out when I talked about my wife and speeding up her metabolism. She had some of those issues before, and we did I did coach her through them through working uh, on behaviors, and it was hard. It took a year of her to really 
finally mentally understand, you know, kind of what was going on because she wanted to go back to what she was doing before. Ali, is any is anything striking a chord for you? I mean, does anything sound like it's possibly you? That we're talking yeah, about? I feel like it's maybe halfway. Like, I definitely do have the tendency to be like more driven in like just my paths. Like, it has to be this way. I have to train this way and eat this way. Um, and then maybe a little bit of the body um, self image as well. Just like I definitely try to be aware when I eat, but I know that it's just tendency. I slip on my phone and don't yeah. think about it and then i go to the kitchen to put something away and i pick up a handful of whatever yeah and it doesn't go in so yeah definitely a bit of both it seems to be a bit of intensity there i think you know sort of relieving that from you will go a long way and just kind of you know being able to uh not be so hyper focused on what's good what's not good uh and, and just try to find things that'll help nourish you and, and, and have, have you feel good in your performance yeah well, you know you know ali you're uh, i'm gonna make a guess here you said you're a coach i yeah. bet i bet you are an excellent coach to the people that you work with and i bet the advice i'm giving you or we're giving you right now is what you would tell one of your athletes <laughs> if they came to you yeah and I, yeah, I'm I'm, and this is true for all coaches and trainers, I'm going to say this right now, maybe not all, but 90-something percent of us, we're way better with our clients than we, we are with ourselves. I have practices I do with myself that I would comp I would never tell clients to do, and I'm fully aware of this. It's very challenging. So one of, the one of the things that I do before I do certain things, I say, would I have a client do this? How would I advise a client if they came to me with the same challenge? And that usually gives me the best answer. Doesn't always mean I'll listen because sometimes or often I don't want to listen to myself, but it does give us the best answers. So give that a shot. Say to yourself, okay, if I was a student coming to me saying this, what would I tell them? It's it's also important that you recognize that um, the greatest challenge that you're going to have doing this is you probably will see a little bit of weight gain. I mean, we're trying to increase calories. You're trying to get stronger. We're hopefully going to be building muscle. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because that's and, a tough yeah, one. So one of the things that you, you've got to trust this process, and this this is always the most difficult part, is you talk to these guys that give you advice about speeding your metabolism up. We tell you something like, hey, reduce all the, the volume of training you're doing, and also let's increase some calories. And then you get, you're getting on the scale every day and you're like, oh my God, I've gone up three to five pounds and you freak out and then you go back to your old behaviors. Uh, but you got to trust the process here and stay. And if that means that you uh, stay away from the scale for a while, uh, then do that. Um, I, I'm okay with the tracking scale stuff so long as you got the self-awareness to know that, to know that this could be a tendency or, or the things that Sal's kind of alluding to. Um, but just be aware of that, that that's going to be the first major hurdle is you're going to probably see a little bit of weight gain, but don't be focused on that. Focus on your, your strengths, focus on your, I'm looking, what I'm looking for is you to get stronger and to tell me things like, man, Adam, I'm, my, I'm getting hungry now. My appetite's kicking up. Like these are all positive signs that we're moving in the right direction, regardless of what we're seeing on the scale. Yeah. Allie, I'm going to send you the intuitive nutrition guide if you don't have it, have it. I think that'll help you. Okay, I don't, but thank you. All right, thanks, Allie. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, thanks, guys. Have a great day. You too. Did she say she had anabolic? I didn't ask. <laughs> She's, uh, you know what, Doug? Let's uh, eat, send her that too. If she I think it. she said she had it. Okay, I, I'll I put think, it in there. I think she did case. say she had. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think she did. You know, I tell you, man, um, and I could tell as we're talking to her, I can tell we're hitting maybe some, some, you know, some nerves. Yeah, I've trained ex gymnasts. I've trained ex like uh, synchronized swimmers and divers. <laughs> Um, uh, figure you skaters, synchronized swimmers. They have, and and they're and they are they're really. Hey, man, I tell you, you ever watch that? That's an insane. <laughs> no, dude, it's so random. I'm that like, is so yeah. Random. Like, oh wow, yeah, I, I can't say I, I've trained a lot. I've actually trained a lot of gymnasts. <laughs> have you? Yeah, yeah. No, I had a client. I trained that, bocce ballers. No, shut up. <laughs> that was directed at me. Yeah. I actually had a client who was an alternate in the Olympics in synchronized swimming. But it, that growing up in that environment, yeah. You, it's. It, I swear, when they be, when they came to me, it was always like we got to deal with this this these old behaviors, this yeah. body image issues. It's really really challenging. And then what you said, Adam, so true. They have this switch that yeah. they've trained so hard where they can yeah. literally turn it on, ignore pain, 
ignore tiredness, ignore body signals, and just go because that's what got them successful. Yeah, when they were athletes. all eyes are on them. I mean, yes. they're the center of focus. And like you had brought up, you know, in terms of like weighing in, and then also you got to look a certain way, you got to move your body a certain way. You know, that sticks with you. Like I, that, that kind of intensity and pressure you place on yourself. You know, it's it's just tough because a lot of times you don't see that about yourself. Uh, you don't see that, uh, you know, that may be causing you, uh, you know, a bit of struggle. A hundred percent of the time, it's either, either one of the things that we were talking about mm -hmm. or a blend of both. Yeah. Right. It's either, either we've got major body image issues and that's driving your behaviors and your training and your dieting, or you still got that, you know, athletic switch in your head where, you know, whenever you go after yeah. your workouts or dieting, you apply the same type of mentality. All or nothing. Yeah, yeah. As, yeah. A, as an Olympic athlete, you know, and it's yeah. just like so different when we're talking about health and, and, and longevity and body composition, like it's a different ball game. So I have found that training clients like this, it is either – Either one of those things we talked about or a blend of the two always. No, totally. And I do I want to say this too about athletes like this, because I've had people ask me this question and say, Well, if 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 training too much is detrimental, then why are gymnasts and divers and you know athletes like that, right? Uh, maybe uh, uh, ice skaters, why are they training so many hours during the day? Aren't they overtraining? And my answer is they are. However, those sports are so technical that the frequency and volume of training really is about perfecting their skill and technique. Mm -hmm. It's less about training their bodies. They're fit as hell already. If anything, they have they end up losing some of their fitness and strength because of so much training. But it's about, per if you watch a gymnast, yes, they're explosive and strong, but look at their lines, their body control. That comes There's from- so much nuance that, that comes from doing attention to. Well, yes. All, sports aren't healthy for you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's, they're not. That, no. That's actually the not first- Not at that level, definitely no, not. No, I mean, all sports, they, they really are not healthy. But does that mean that you can't incorporate some of the sports that you love and have a healthy life? That's not what I'm saying. But competitive sports, especially at the high level, is not healthy, any yeah. of them. Mm -hmm. You you are doing. And you like, have to recognize that and be able to move forward and, yeah. and live a lifestyle where you know it, it's totally different than that. Going into longevity, you have purposes. different goals yeah. when you when you are when you're competitively playing a sport. I don't give a shit if my body fat percentage is up or down, or I'm getting great sleep, or my health, or my libido. No, that all it cares is I'm I'm better at my sport today than I was yesterday. That's it. And so and sometimes that means I'm training five hours a day to get to that level. Yep. It doesn't mean that it's it's bad or wrong. It just means you have different goals. Goals. And so you get these athletes that were highly competitive and good at their sport, and they try and apply that same mentality towards getting in shape or being healthy. And they're they're two different worlds. Dude, you know how many yeah. female athletes I've trained who didn't get their period until they stopped yeah. their competitive Crazy. sport yeah. because their bodies were so hammered all the time. So it's just it's one of those things. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal, and they're totally free. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. By the way, Adam and I shadow banned on Instagram. So you got to type out the full name and it's a hard way to find us. But if you find us, good for you. Give us a follow.